All right, so let's, we're going to talk conceptually first, right? And then we'll, we'll talk about the e-collar itself, and then we'll talk about working in on the e-collar, right? So what we're doing with this work is what's often called a three-action introduction. So what we're doing here is we're going to condition him to the e-collar using the three main actions that we ask any dog to do. It's like any behavior you're going to ask him to perform is going to be go, come, or stop. All right, so go, you guys have been doing kennel with him since he's been a puppy, right? So that's gonna be our go right now. Later on, that can turn into a send away at great distances. Retrieving requires the dog to go. So all of those things are movement away from you. That's what go means, move away from me, right? Come is recall, right? So come back to me. Um, that one's pretty straightforward. And then stopping is sit down, stand, right? Any of our stationary behaviors. What I want you to keep in mind about the work that we're doing is I have to make sure that my dog understands these behaviors before I add the e-collar because the e-collar before it can work as compulsion, right? A way to apply force to let the dog know they haven't done the right thing yet and then also let them know when they've done it right by turning pressure off. Because when we start out the e-collar is not gonna mean that, right? We have to give it that meaning. What it's going to mean when we start is just, this is weird, it's distracting, and I don't know what to do with it, right? That's how the dog's going to respond initially. So when we're working through these things, expect him to get a little squirrely. Um, kind of the classic line here is your dog's unconditioned response to any stimulus is not your responsibility. Whatever he just does naturally, uh, we don't have any control over that. Right? The like, first thing that comes to mind whenever he's in a new situation or he experiences a new type of distraction, stimulus, or whatever. What is 100% your responsibility is his learned response to those things. So whatever he does initially is fine. Your job is to teach him what he should do instead. And the most important thing about e-collar that people mess up is they stop applying stimulation at the wrong time. So if I'm working on move away from me, and I'm tapping the button and the dog won't leave my side and I go, huh, that's weird, and I stop tapping the button. I just taught him standing still was the correct thing to do because that's what turned pressure off. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you'll see dogs at different times throw out a bunch of different behaviors that are not what we're looking for. So the, the very kind of straightforward, simple rule is you have to keep applying pressure through that until they complete the action, okay? So this is our three actions. When we talk about how we're gonna apply pressure, what we're gonna do today is from the time you give the dog the command until he completes the action, we're gonna be applying that pressure. So you'll, this will make more sense when we start kind of using the e-collar, but it's, you've done this already with a leash, right? Like you, you apply pressure forward with the leash until he jumped up on a, a cot or a training table or something, and then you relaxed your leash. It's the same concept, it's just we're giving you electronics that do a similar thing. And as soon as I start giving people extra stuff to hold in their hands, it's like all their technique and sense goes out the window, right? So just keep that in mind. The second thing that we're gonna do, once that's going really, really well, right? I see a high level of commitment and we'll talk about what that looks like. Then we're gonna start, applying, we're gonna start turning pressure off sooner. So we're gonna go from Pressure going from the time I give the command until he completes the action to pressure going on when I give the command until he just shows commitment to the action. So what that might look like when we're talking about kennel, which is going to be the first thing we work on, is at this phase, we're saying kennel and we're applying that stimulation until all four feet are up on the table. When we get here, we're saying kennel, and as soon as he takes a step in the right direction, we're going to stop applying pressure. Okay, so what we're trying to show him is, is like, this is how we fade out pressure first off. But the second thing is, is I'm trying to work towards him understanding if he's promptly responding to what I'm asking for, he gets to avoid feeling pressure at all. So here he, he has to escape it, right? It will happen, but it turns off when you complete the action. Then here it will happen, but as soon as you show me some commitment, it's gonna turn off. Then here I'm just gonna tap him one time when I give him the command. And then eventually when we're done, there's no pressure at all. I'm gonna just tell him to do it and he should do it, right? We will reward him for correct responses throughout this entire thing with something extrinsic. You don't have to, but I find it helps balance out any of like the, if he starts feeling a little mopey 
or something because he doesn't like the way the collar feels. We're not going to be like beating him up with it. It's not going to be particularly high levels, but it's a novel sensation. And so some dogs get weird about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of this is discovery learning. It's going to take a number of repetitions until he understands. But when we use the collar and obedience, we're for the most part getting them to do something. Even this stop is doing something, right? It's like going from moving to a stop. So that's, a, that's an action. It's not the same thing as like I was barking and now I'm feeling this until I shut up, right? It's not exactly the same. This is a problem sometimes for people that put their dogs on electric fences before they try to do e-collar training because then the electric fence, it's usually kind of a pretty punitive level of stimulation and the dog learns, I gotta immediately stop dead in my tracks when I feel that and that's how I turn it off, right? Or, so we get more of an avoidant response to electrical stimulation with dogs that have done that. Um, I don't think we'll have that problem with him. Uh, and even when we do, it just means we got to spend a little bit more time clarifying. Like, I understand that's what it meant before, but it means something different now. 